everybody. Welcome to another Facebook Global Travel Update. Peter Greenberg here on the last Tuesday of October 2021. Welcome aboard. We have a two for this week. I've been all over the world. We started last week in Mackinac Island in Michigan. What a great place that is. Then back to L.A. for all of about 24 hours. Up to Santa Clara, California. Then hopped on a plane and flew to where I am now. Dublin in Ireland. So happy to be back after about 20 months. Uh, they're happy that, that I'm back just because they're happy that everybody's coming back. But I'm particularly happy to be here. Uh, a lot to say about what's going on in Ireland. As you know, they uh, they relaxed the restrictions back on July of this year, July 19th. And since then, they are open for business. A lot of, a lot of things I will report on that as well. But just some housekeeping notes. If you got some comments or questions, you know what to do. Send them in right now. If I can't answer them, then email me to peter at petergreenberg.com. We'll do it either online or on our radio show that airs this Saturday. And I'll tell you where it airs from. Dublin, where I am, uh, in honor of Halloween, our special Halloween extravaganza. For those of you who don't know about history, the Irish sort of invented it. They No, not history, Halloween. <laughs> That's another story. The Irish would love to tell you they invented all of history, and that would be a lie. But Halloween, you got to give them credit for. They did trick-or-treating from day one, and we'll talk about that. Most importantly, though, lots of stuff to talk about in the news, and I will get to that right after I talk about what I'm doing in Ireland. I'm back here because, face it, Ireland was really in a lockdown situation. They were really shut down for 18 months, and it gave them a time to do it over, to reset it, to rethink it. And in the process, three cheers for them, over 90% of their population is vaccinated. They did better than we did. Uh, they are now open. You can come here with your proof of vaccination, not have to quarantine. That's a good thing. You don't have to test. Of course, you do have to test on the way home, but that's from any location back to the U.S. Uh, the other thing that's going on right now is it's a numbers game. Americans are the number one visitors to Ireland. Back in 2018 and 2019, 27% of the visitors were American. We spent over $1.9 billion. They want us, they need us, and uh, I'm happy to be back myself. Guess what? Airfares right now to Ireland, I've seen as low as $359 round trip. You can't get from New York to Cleveland for that. Uh, hotels are doing deals as well, but value added deals, not just the rate but the experience, stay in a castle overnight for free, stay at a lighthouse. They've got 60 of them, many of which you could actually overnight in. So many things to do here. I don't have to tell you about storytelling and mythology. You've all studied it. If you haven't, you should. But the best part of the deal is now they are also a great hub. You can fly here and from here you can fly just about anywhere in Western Europe. The flights are not long and they're not half as crowded as the flights are back in the U.S. And the flights in the U.S. are about to get more crowded. Why? It's November 8th. Now, that may not have a big significance to you, but over here, it's a big deal. That's the day America opens up to fully vaccinated travelers from all over the world. And to give you an idea, I, I talked about this last week. It bears repeating. Within 24 hours of the Biden administration announcing the reopening date of November 8th, bookings for flights to the U.S. from Europe went up 750 percent, and they've stayed that high. So guess what? They're not just flying to the U.S., they're flying through it. And in that process, airfares are going up in the U.S. at the rate I talked about it last week. It's continuing this week, and it will continue through the end of November at 3 to 5% per day. That's, that's compounded. That never usually happens at this time of the year, except for the, you know, the four-day holiday weekend and, and Thanksgiving. Other than that, it's supposed to be a slow period. Kiss seasonality goodbye. The folks in Europe have been waiting 18 months to visit their friends and relatives, and they are coming. So here's the irony. They're all coming to the U.S. You need to come over here now. The capacity can handle it. The hotels can handle it. You're not standing in line. You're breathing really fresh air. You know, I have a metric. Everybody was always asking, you know, where's your favorite place in the world? And I tell them my metric, and it's going to sound silly, but I'm going to give it to you two ways. One a little bit sillier than the other, but I still believe it right? First one, I don't have one favorite place. I have about 20. But the metric I use to get to those 20 is simple, where I sleep the best. That's right. 
where I sleep the best. Because where I sleep the best is where I think the best, is where I create the best, it's where I love the best. It's the place I want to come back to time after time. And Ireland happens to be one of those places. I had a friend who had a house near Cork. I'm so angry that he sold it because every year I'd look forward to just to go visit him. Actually, not him, the house. Why? Because you leave the windows open. And within 15 minutes of my arrival, I was in the deepest, most incredible sleep. And then you'd get up and, and walk the countryside and the coast. That's what it means to me. And I have 19 other places that fit that bill as well. But what do they all share in common? It's the air. It's where you sleep the best. So that's the first one. The other thing that, that is part of my metric of what, what are my favorite places? Okay, here's where it gets a little corny. Okay, I've given you advance warning. It's anywhere I happen to be with someone I'm in love with. By the way, that person happens to be my wife. So we've solved that problem. All right. And she travels with me almost all the time. So I'm constantly in love. See, that's how it works. Okay. Now, for getting that, you have an opportunity now. The irony is that the airfares are not going up over here right now. The deals are getting better. It's a buyer's market. And you can use Ireland as a hub to go anywhere else. So that's the spiel on Ireland. But I'm telling you, I'm very happy to be here. If you look behind me, I'm here in Dublin. It's the entrance back there to the Dublin Castle. There are a lot of castles and, of course, a lot of museums. The museums are free. And some might argue that all of Ireland is a museum. All right. That's my Ireland spiel. Now let's to the news. The battle lines are still being drawn between the pilots and the employees of Southwest, American and United, about vaccination mandates. And it's not getting any easier. It's getting heated. A judge in, in uh, a federal judge just extended a restraining order against United, forcing the airline to continue to pay benefits and salary to those who were not vaccinated and not allowing United to put them either on unpaid leave or firing them. You already saw what happened with Southwest. The pilots sued the airline and we saw the shutdown that Southwest had about two weeks ago. What did Southwest do last week? They basically stepped back from the vaccine mandate. They pulled it back. That leaves American. Over 4,000 pilots at American, they have 14,000 pilots, but 4,000 of them at last count remain unvaccinated. And that's, look, they're holding all the cards because what they're saying to the airline is, hey, want to fire us or put us on unpaid leave? Bye bye Good luck finding an airline to fly. And that's all happening when? Right before Thanksgiving. You couldn't have picked a worse time. But wait, there's more. Uh, and I'm staying with the airlines for a second. There's a real problem. Uh, first, I'll start with the good news. The good news is we have not had a major airline catastrophe in this country, with one exception in 2009, that was Colgan Air up, up near Buffalo. But we haven't had a major airline fatality in this country since November 11th, 2001. We're coming up on the 20th anniversary. That was when the American Airlines flight to the Dominican Republic tanked it out in Rockaway when the tail fell off the plane shortly after takeoff. So think about that. A remarkable period of airline safety due in no small part to what we call the sterile cockpit. It's about discipline and conversation that's finally focused. And the rule about the sterile cockpit is the only things that can be talked about in the cockpit are related to the performance of the airplane itself. You can't talk about who won the football game last night or who's dating your sister. You can't talk about who you drank with last night. It's got to be just that. It's cockpit discipline. And guess what? Cockpit discipline appears to be breaking down over the vaccine mandate. Already, the airline's own unions, by the way, these are the unions that are suing the airlines and pushing back against those very mandates, sent out notices to their own members, their pilots saying, cut it out. No more discussions about the vaccines in the cockpit. Because we had situations where the pilot was vaccinated, the co-pilot wasn't, and there were some verbal fisticuffs going on. That's not flying the plane. So this issue is not going away anytime soon. I'm just letting you know, be prepared for it to explode sometime before November 24th. I mean, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, let's not do a remake of planes, trains, and automobiles, especially if it's starring you. All right, so there's that one. Now I got to move on to the TSA. 40% of the TSA agents remain unvaccinated. That's right. 
and their unions pushing back against the vaccine mandates. And they're already understaffed by 5,000 agents, none of whom are going to be hired before Thanksgiving. And if they are, they won't be trained before Thanksgiving. By the way, a little airport security line tip from moi. If you get to the airport, you got to go through security, right? This is in the U.S. Which line do you pick? You have three or four different lines. I'm not talking about pre-check. I'm talking about regular lines, right? Which line do you pick? Most of you would say the shortest. And you would be wrong. Here's the key. You look for the line where there's only one TSA agent looking at the monitor screen of what's going through the conveyor belt. I don't care if that line is to Brazil, you stay in that line. Because if you see a line with two agents looking at that screen, one of them is being trained. And every bag gets stopped for four minutes. Let's do the math. You'll be in that line for a long time. Now, somebody at the TSA has to answer this relatively rhetorical question. Why are you training your agents at eight in the morning and five in the afternoon, the two peak push times at the airports? That's ludicrous, inefficient, and uh, ill will engendering. Okay, so now we got the TSA issue to ha handle because that's brewing. And then one more thing for those people who still depend on the US mail, remember, the Biden administration has put all the airlines on notice that they're, in, they're on the verge of losing their federal contracts if their employees are not vaccinated by December 8th. Well, guess what, guys? How do the airlines lose their contracts? By not having their employees vaccinated. What contracts do they stand to lose? Carrying the U.S. mail. That's how the airlines stayed in business from day one. They had the original contract from the United States Post Office. Well, we've got Christmas coming up. If the US airlines don't fly the mail, the US Post Office does not have a plan B. They don't have a plan B. They don't have an Air Force. There's no such thing as air mail anymore. So get ready for that little thing to explode. So we will be watching this very, very carefully in the days and weeks ahead. And it's gonna to come to a head very, very soon. Absolutely. Let's go to some of your questions, and I'm going to scroll down here to say hi to everybody. All right. Patrick says, greetings from Chicago. Uh, and uh, greetings from Tanzania. Okay. We love that. Um, and uh, and good evening from Nairobi. We got Africa folks watching tonight. All right. Uh, oh, and Katrina says, hello from Alabama. Okay. Africa, Alabama. We got the A's. Uh, ah, Terry says, greetings from Madison, Four of us went to Italy this month and took the the uh, the home test before we left, packed additional tests to take three days before we left Italy to return home. When we connected online uh, to take our return test, one of the tests was missing both the swab and the test card. They said, sorry about that. And luckily, a local pharmacy in our small village was able to do a rapid antigen test at short notice. Look, there's a, I'm sorry, guys, I'm an analog guy. I am an analog guy. I believe my favorite button on my computer is print. I don't believe in home testing. I don't believe in putting my boarding pass on my cell phone because my battery dies, I don't get on the plane. So the, the backup, or in my case, primary is, I know it's politically incorrect to say P-A-P-E-R, but I print and I carry it with me. I, I can't begin to tell you on my flight yesterday to Ireland, how many people were stopped at the gate because they couldn't access their phone information on their COVID QR tests, right? They couldn't do it. I had mine printed, da-da, I'm on the plane. All right, uh, so I know your word of advice, so I hope you'll follow it and everybody else will too. Print, 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 no more home tests, guys, right? This is not a time to do it yourself. Okay, Craig says, good morning from Newport Beach. Um, Ah, Colleen says, hope I didn't need a boat to get to my presentation in Santa Clara over the weekend. I didn't. It was a very successful convention of the Travelers Travel and Adventure Show. And we'll be doing another one in January at the Javits Center in New York. Uh, check your local listings, but I think it's the last weekend in, in New York at the Javits Center. I love the travel show when it comes to the Javits Center in New York for another reason. Half the Javits Center is the Travel and Adventure Show, and the other half is the New York Boat Show. Yay! So it's a, it's a twofer. Um, all right. Thank you, Colleen. 
Greetings from Florence, Arizona, says Sharon. Julia says, eager to hear Dublin remains on my list. What 10 days would you do around it? Okay, here's the deal. Ireland is itself a hidden gem. Uh, you're not gonna have any language difficulties. You can use Dublin as your hub. Public transportation is, is great. You don't even have to leave Dublin and you can handle 10 days. But if I were you, I would pick up two or three other places. And of course, to me, there's there's great food scene here, great whiskey scene here, and of course, a great music and art scene. So you can't fail. Uh, the music is everywhere. Juice says, greetings from Japan. Uh, Craig loves Ireland. Okay. Um, I'm listening here. Oh, Alexander says, greetings from Rio de Janeiro. November 8th, the Brazilians get to come to America too if they show proof of vaccination. Uh, Lindy says, bonjour from Ventura. Okay. Wow. Okay. And you do get me two days in a row. You're right. For those of you who are just tuning in, you're getting a twofer this week. Tonight, you get me from Dublin. Tomorrow, I'm wheels up at O Dark 100. So tomorrow at noon, Eastern time, you get me from Vienna with a special surprise guest. So tune that in and get your questions in too. Uh, Here's one from Sharon. What's the best time to buy airfare to Italy for October 2022? The answer is not now. No, you buy airfare to Italy about April or May for October because that is the off season. Right now, the algorithms that the airlines use that project demand and set prices are not keyed in to getting you a deal for a trip that's, what, 11 months away or 12 months away? Wait, be patient. Okay. Uh Hold on a second. I'm going to scroll back up here. Ah, Roseanne says, an MSC cruise has 800 passengers. Uh, all right. But that's a ship that, that holds a lot more than 800, so you're doing okay. Uh, Beth, thank you for your nice note. Stephen says, greetings from Tennessee. Okay. <laughs> Enjoying your cabbage and corned beef with a frosty pint of Guinness. Stephen, sorry to disappoint you. I'm a pescatarian, so the, 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 the corned beef ain't going to happen. And I'm sorry when it comes to Guinness, you're never going to see me drink warm alcohol. Not going to happen. All right. Uh, okay. Wow. Our good friend Rosalind, who runs our social media, just gave me an update. This will give you an idea of where we are in terms of staffing in the travel industry. There apparently was a job fair at the Denver International Airport with 5,000 available jobs and only 100 people showed up. Wow. We're welcome to the great resignation and the great migration. We're still seeing tremendous movement in this country of people who during the pandemic got a, got a chance, got the opportunity to question their lot in life, to question their job, their passion, their location, their quality of life, their cost of living. And with no regulations to work for an office, they got a chance to sample and sample they did. And in many cases, they're not coming back. That's the biggest challenge for not just this month or next month. That's the next challenge for the next 18 months with or without unemployment benefits. It's other decisions that are being made that go beyond whether or not you're getting a check from Uncle Sam. Um, okay. Um, all right. Geraldine says, ah, hello from Chicago. Greetings from the crater, Nagorgoro. All right. Yes, we were just there about a month and a half ago. Uh, okay. Geraldine agrees with me with printing. You got to do it. I'm sorry. Um, ah, Mr. Raymond Bixon. Never heard of the guy. Aloha from a wet, windy Long Island to you in Dublin. Although for those of you who know me, it's a, it's a tough choice. Dublin or Long Island on a windy day where you, you know, you get to just look out the window and think, eh, it's a toss-up. It's a toss-up. So thanks, Raymond. Uh, all right. John Valdastri, my God, from United Airlines, ex-Continental. Hello, John. Terry Hart, have you been to Sicily in winter? And the answer is I have. It's great. Go to Taormina. And, uh, and, and there are two hotels there, the Plaza Domenico and the San Tomeo. The Plaza Domenico, fascinating hotel, the Allies bombed it in World War II. It was a convent then. 
and half the hotel was destroyed. The last time I was there, how many years later, maybe 50 years after the war, they still kept the destruction where it was to show people what happened. The rest of it is a beautiful five-star hotel. And the Hotel San Tomeo has another interesting history. That was where Mussolini went to vacation. And yes, you can stay in the Mussolini suite. You're on your own. Okay, here we go. Ah, Deborah Pratt, my old buddy. Deborah and the Pratt sisters traveling down the California coast around the floods and mudslides. Still beautiful. Deborah's a trooper. We love you. Okay. Hello from Connecticut to Sharon. Sue says, when do I buy airfare for Italy in May of 2022? If it's before May 15th, do it in February. All right. After that, you might want to do it now. Remember, from May 15th to the end of August, that's high season. Okay. Ah, greetings from Gilroy, California. That's right. The garlic capital of the world. Getting rain finally in California. Is it safe to travel to Cairo, Egypt, or the Mount Sinai and Moses Mountain in Egypt? Yes, it is. And in fact, I go all the time. Uh, and you mentioned uh, Cairo. You want to go now between November and March. It's really the best weather. And you mentioned Mount Sinai. Amazing place. I climbed it. And I climbed it at night. Uh, and you think going up is tough? For You get there right at the, at the top of, of, uh, of Mount Sinai. And what do you see? It's St. Catherine's Monastery. And you're there for the dawn. It's unbelievably beautiful. But then you got to go down. And you're reminded on the way down that all those steps all the way up were built by a monk doing penance. And when you see the separation of the steps, how much they're between each other, these aren't steps. These are mini mountains. You have to ask yourself, what did this guy do to do that much penance to make those steps so divided? It's, it's crazy, but you got to do it. Um, Kathy says, hello, a little bit late from San Diego. All right, Kathy. Okay, we're going down here. Uh, Catherine says, the Cliff House Hotel on the southern coast of Ireland is one of the most delightful places on the planet. I couldn't agree with you more. Michael says, greetings from your fire friends in North Tahoe. Hello, Chief. That's Chief Michael Schwartz from the Lake Tahoe Fire Department. Great guy. And as a fellow firefighter, loved riding around with you. I want to come back and see you soon. Um, Okay, Craig Sullivan says, staffing our hotels in the U.S. is a huge issue, bigger than most people think. I couldn't agree with you more, Craig. Um, Geraldine says, always wanted to go to Europe with a family. Where do you think would be the best place to go for how long? A family of four with two special need adult children. Well, look, it's not coincidental that I'm in Ireland right now. It's manageable on so many levels, especially if you have special needs kids. Uh, they, they've done a great job not knowing what the special needs are, but they've done a great job in making Ireland accessible and making it manageable. And uh, and remember, it's not a big country. You can do it. Um, okay. Uh, when should I book accommodations for France in the spring? Again, if it's before May 15th, wait till February. There's no need to rush right now. Okay. David Alpern, my old buddy from Newsweek, says mechanical issue led to a nine-hour delay, resulted in extra expenses for me and other scheduled complications. Airline response to my outreach was a nominal gift of frequent flyer miles. What do you advise in the case of an extended delay doing, due, due to stated mechanical reasons? Okay, David, I hope you didn't accept that frequent flyer mile gift because it's more or less worthless. What they give you, 5,000 miles, maybe 10? And then good luck redeeming them. Right? They're upping the ante on the eligibility for redemption all the time. No, no, you got to ratchet it up a level to a supervisor because how much is your time worth? Right, At the very least, they should have given you a voucher in a dollar amount for at least $250 that you can actually apply to your next abusive flight. Okay, Giving somebody frequent flyer miles is like a gift certificate to a store that's closed because there are 23 trillion I'm not exaggerating, 23 trillion unredeemed miles out there that haven't been redeemed. So now there's 23 million and you're 5,000. So next time, ratchet it up. Um, okay, from Virginia. Hello from Santa Clara. Ah, thank you for your nice comments about my speech the other day. When is the best time to buy tickets to Portugal for late April, early May? Right after the first of the year. Okay. Catherine says, we are considering a trip to Borneo in August. Any advice? Yes. 
look at the map. You want to you want to basically combine that trip between Borneo and Indonesia, or Borneo and Singapore, or Borneo and Hong Kong. You'll be glad you did. Okay. Uh, the Clarence Hotel in, in Dublin, Craig says it's true. Uh, the Marker Hotel in Dublin is great. By the way, we're coming to you right now. It just recently opened, it reopened actually. It opened right before the pandemic shut, and now it's reopened. The newest entrant is the Hard Rock. I'm in the Hard Rock right now. Uh, so there you have that. All right, now I got to share a photo with you, and I got to give you some background before we post it. What were we thinking about before the pandemic? Over tourism. What was I thinking about before the pandemic? The fact that there's a disconnect between the people who run airports and the people who run tourism. There shouldn't be. First impressions and last impressions are big. They're indelible. We remember. I mean, nothing, I won't say nothing, but few things are as frustrating and anger-inducing as getting off an 11-hour flight to wait in line for two hours just to clear passport control. There are no surprises about what time planes land. Nobody just, you know, issued an extra edition of the newspaper to let everybody know. The Minister of Tourism needs to talk to the other ministers to make sure that they're in this together. Now, two days ago, uh, I, I take that back, yesterday, what am I talking about? It was yesterday. On Sunday, I fly from San Francisco to Lisbon to connect to my flight here to Dublin. 11-hour flight. Lovely flight. Enough connect time. Thankfully, right, I always give myself at least 90 minutes to get to the flight coming to Dublin. However, when I get off the plane and I go through passport control, I didn't go through passport control. I got stuck in this. There you go. Welcome to Lisbon. 16 inspection stations, only two being manned. One of which was for European Union passport holders only. That was empty. And the other one for all these people here, including me, because I qualify as what? Non-EU passport. How stupid is this? Now, this is not a new thing. This has been going on in Portugal for the last four years. I know this because I've experienced it. I took this photo. About a month and a half ago, I had a conversation with the Secretary of State of Tourism for Portugal, Rita Marquez, and I said to her, can't you stop this and fix it? And she said, well, actually, that's not what I do. That's another minister. I said, do you ever converse with other ministers? Well, yes, but there's a bigger problem. Really? What's the problem? The unions, they just won't cooperate. I said, okay, can we envelop the, the entrepreneurial spirit at an airport to make sure that people realize that with, with, if you treat people badly like this, you won't have a job? Can you incentivize them? Put them on a bonus? Give them a reason to actually do their job? Well, guess what? Hasn't happened yet. And in all fairness, Portugal has no monopoly on this. It's every other major international airport in the world, including many in the US. However, in this situation, where you have a tourism dependent, tourism driven economy, this is unacceptable. It's unacceptable in St. Martin. It's unacceptable in Buenos Aires. It's unacceptable in Atlanta. And it's unacceptable everywhere you go where they know better. They're not surprised about this at the governmental level. They see it every day. So I guess you may be wanting to know, did I stay in that line? I did not. Did I like push my way through? I did not. I did what I always do. I got out of the line. Remember, I hold a US passport. I got out of the line and I went through the European Union passport holders only of which there was nobody in line. I walked up to the inspector and said, lo siento mucho, that was my Spanish. He smiled, laughed, stamped my passport. I was gone. The people in this photo may still be at the airport. It's not their fault. Something has to be done. I'm sharing it with you. And by the way, it gets even worse because as we come out of the pandemic, what are countries doing to generate more revenue? And they're taxing people without representation? 
Thailand is now doing a tourism tax. Cancun is doing a tourism tax. Other countries are doing the same, trying to recoup that revenue that they can't get anyway. This is not the way to visit a country. This is not the way to leave a country. Oh, by the way, that was the arrival line. You should have seen the departure line. Just as bad. So I'm not resting my case here. I'm presenting it. I'm sure we have a lot of agreement out there in Facebook land. But we need to vote with our wallets. We need to put these countries on notice. We're not booking there if we can't get there. Or we can fly there. I'm talking about actually getting there. All right. Let me go back down here and, and answer a few more questions here. Um, oh, yeah. One more thing about my favorite other topic, resort fees. Those lawsuits are, pro are proceeding with U.S. attorneys general suing major hotel chains claiming a failure to disclose a lack of transparency and what they call drip pricing. So watch this space. It's going to get ugly in the courtroom, but hopefully it'll get resolved. Just wanted you to know that. All right, I'm going to get back to some of your written questions in a second. And now it's time, uh, before we go to the photo, I'm just going to say, before we go to the photo of the week, I'm going to give you a hint about what you're going to see. It was not taken in Dublin, although this photo dates back, the actual, what it was photoed, dates back to 1348, but not in Dublin. So now, show the photo and tell me, if you can tell me, where this is. And by the way, uh, this was taken. I'm going to give you the uh, the credit where the credit is due. Let me get back to that right now. That goes to, who was it? Ah, Alex McCammon, who uh, was nice enough to send this in. Anybody want to guess where this is? Remember, it goes back to the 1300s. Anybody? Going once, going twice. Okay, I'm going to tell you, last chance, it's the Galata Tower. These are the steps inside the tower in Istanbul, going back to the days of Constantinople, the year 1348. Alex, there you go. We got the details right below you. At one point, the tower was the tallest building at 219 feet high when it was built in, as I just said. 1348. Three cheers to Alex for sending that in. Much appreciated. And uh, tomorrow, again, I'm, I'm warning you, special guest star from Vienna. So stay tuned on that. All right, let's go to some of your questions. We'll get those answered as well. And let me go right to them. I got them right here. Remember, you print. Here we go. All right, Irene, I read that a lot of pubs are still closed in Ireland. Is this true? You know what? They're opening. And they're opening more and more every day, especially in, in Dublin. And you're not going to have a problem because anywhere you are in Ireland, you just walk out on the street and go, could you tell me where the nearest pub is? <laughs> they're going to take you by the hand. You're not going to be at a loss. Uh, Anne says, traveling from the U.S. to Italy next June, what's the best time to fly air by airfare? I told you, February. But when in June? Hopefully before June 15th, right? Remember what I said. Okay, Diane. Seeking travel destinations for people who don't walk well. I have a walker. Any suggestions? Interested in the Caribbean, Mexico, or Europe? Really want to go to Italy? Small cruises? Thank you. Here's the biggest problem. I'm going to back into this with cruises. Just about every major cruise line has done a great job of making their ships accessible to people with mobility issues, right? They've ramped everything. They've got handicapped accessible cabins. Not enough, but they have them. Here's what hasn't happened. It's the ports. The ports are not all accessible. So you can ramp your way all over the ship, and then when the ship gets there, nothing but steps. I appeal to the cruise lines in an ecumenical, nonpartisan way. Hold a press conference. Make an announcement that starting immediately, you will no longer sail to the following 25 ports until they're accessible to all of your passengers. You know how fast they'd have stonemasons out there ramping everything? This is a no-brainer, guys. It's not about profit. It's about fairness, and it's about accessibility. So don't depend on the ADA just to solve your on-ship problems. When people are on a cruise ship, they also want to get off the cruise ship. And that, and that includes the tenders as well. You have a responsibility here. I hope you take it seriously and do what I told you, because it's a no-brainer. 
I will bet anybody that you hold that press conference, those ports will be ramped within six weeks. It'll be priority. You know why? Because it's all about their revenue. People don't realize that 19% of the American public has a physical disability. It could be a mobility problem, could be hearing, could be sight, doesn't matter. They travel, they deserve the freedom to travel, and they deserve the right to make choices with their wallets when people don't give them that choice. So I'm trying to speak up at this point because I've seen it happen all too often when people book a cruise and then they're trapped on the ship. Now, to answer your other question, there's a great organization called SATH, S-A-T-H, stands for Society for Accessible Travel and Hospitality. They are a great resource to letting you know where you can go with your limited walking ability because of the walker, where you can actually enjoy yourself and have a great experience. You can also write me, peter at petergreenberg.com, and we'll get you some more information about that as well. That applies to all of you. You can always email me your questions to that address, peter at petergreenberg.com. If we don't answer them today or online, we'll answer them on our radio show coming this Saturday from Dublin. And of course, it's from 10.05 in the morning to 1 p.m. Eastern time. If you can't find the market in your area or the station, no problem. We stream it live on our website with the imaginative name, petergreenberg.com. Okay, more questions here. Uh, here's one. For, oh, okay. Here's one. Is Argentina in early December a good idea? You bet it's a good idea. They're open now. Argentina's open. Chile's open. Uruguay is open. December, I always used to go to Argentina over Thanksgiving. Why? It's called Christmas shopping. The Argentine peso is so devalued against the U.S. dollar. It's a true buyer's market. Whether you go to San Telmo, which, of course, is the great Saturday and Sunday market in Buenos Aires, or go anywhere else through the country, what a great shopping opportunity. And you buy everything you want and come back with it. At, at bargain prices, whether it's leather goods or shoes or fashion or antiques in, in, in Buenos Aires. I have one of the world's best collections of antique pewter seltzer bottles. For those people who are old enough to remember when the seltzer man came by. By the way, I don't remember that either, but I do know the story. I'm not that old, but great, great. And by the way, the seltzer bottle that they'll sell in a store in Santa Monica for $600 is $6 in Buenos Aires. I rest my case. All right. Uh, CB, I hope I got that name right, wants to know, when am I coming to Uganda? I'd love to come back to Uganda. I actually love Uganda. There's a reason why Winston Churchill called Uganda the Pearl of Africa. It really is. And uh, great experiences there. And, of course, the Nile. I mean, we're talking class six rapids. Hold on. But it's great. Uh Jim wants to know, are things better with Southwest Airlines flight delays? Uh, the answer is a qualified yes. Because you said the word delays. I'm going to add to that, cancellations. We all know how many flights they canceled and how many flights they delayed. The only solution for Southwest is to pare the schedule down. They overscheduled the airline. They didn't have enough staff. And one little break in the chain on a point-to-point -point carrier means everybody goes without. And that's what happened. So Southwest is doing some preemptive uh, cancellations way ahead of time, or literally taking flights off their schedule in order to be able to support the ones that they know they can support. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to share with you a wild story about ticket prices in the event of a cancellation. All right? All I'm going to say is we were shooting a story up in, in San Francisco last weekend, I flew up on an American Airlines flight from Los Angeles to San Francisco. My airfare was $98, okay? My cameraman, who loves Southwest, he lives by them, right? He wanted to fly LAX to San Francisco on Southwest. No problem. His airfare is about $130. Okay. They canceled his flight. I'm going to give you the cliffhanger tomorrow. You won't believe what happened. And you won't believe what the other airfare prices were. It's not a typo. I'm not making it up. It's well worth waiting around for tomorrow to get that answer. Okay. Um, here's Karen. It says, I want to take my kids to see the Dead Sea. When is it the best time to go? And what airport coming from Newark? Well, here's good news. You know, it's coming this summer. United Airlines has announced new nonstop service from the U.S. to 
Amman, Jordan. How cool is that? And of course, you can also fly Royal Jordanian out of New York or Chicago or Detroit. Uh, I love the Dead Sea on the Jordanian side. They've got some beautiful resorts now. Um, and uh, you want to go maybe May before it gets too hot. Even April is good. Okay. Uh, Sim uh, J2 Simpson says, not a huge fan of Singapore airport. LAX is a better bet for a connecting airport. Do you really believe that? Are you serious? Changi is one of my favorite airports in the world. I'd like you to elaborate on why you don't like Singapore airport. That's one of the best things Singapore has going for it is that airport. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to go down here. I missed a few people here, so stay with me. Ah. Uh, Craig says resort fees or urban destination fees are unacceptable at hotels. Couldn't agree more. Uh, we never have had these fees at any of the hotels I've been involved with. My partners and I do not believe in this practice. Craig, thank you for that. We appreciate that. Um, Kathy wants to know if I'm doing a travel show in San Diego next year. And the answer is yes, I am. I'm also doing one in Los Angeles. Um, okay, let's keep going here. I've got more here. Ah, Mike reports back on the Endeavor. That's the new ship from Crystal. He said Endeavor was great. Two submarines, too. Uh, Mike, I hope you took pictures. Um, and Ellen says, can I, can I challenge resort fees at a resort? You can challenge resort fees in your closet. Look, what is a resort fee? It's a less than clever, insidious way of a hotel to try to generate revenue by making you think you're paying less for the room, right? They get your attention by posting the rate but they don't disclose there's a $30 to $50 a night charge for a towel, otherwise known as a resort fee. This is wrong. That's why they're being sued by the attorneys general right now. And look, I don't deny any hotel resort or closet the ability to make a profit if they do it with great communication and transparency. It's really as simple as that. But if you don't disclose something to me and then you want me to pay for something I didn't know, to me, that's a declaration of war and I will fight you, and so should you. If a hotel does not disclose the resort fee at the time you make your reservation, or if they don't disclose it at the time you check in, you dispute it on your credit card. And if they still don't want to play ball with you, you know my address, peter at petergreenberg.com. We love stories like this. Okay? Okay. Um, okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Oh, I have a lot of chatter here about people who said you shouldn't challenge it. I don't know why. What are you getting for the resort fee? Seriously. That you wouldn't have gotten five years ago as part of the regular hotel rate. Why don't the hotels just charge $30 a night more for the room and stop this crap? Okay. The accountants are running the asylum. And when that happens, everybody goes crazy. And when that happens, I go to war. So stop it. Okay. Um, and Mike says, you don't want to challenge it because you'll embarrass yourself in front of everyone they tell you no. Really? Let me explain something. If enough of you say we're not going to do it, it's not about embarrassment. It's about clarity and strength. Somebody has to first look. I'm the kind of guy. I'm going to be really clear about this. I'm the kind of guy that if I'm driving down the street and you tell me, Peter, the speed limit is 65 miles an hour. I'm going to say, gee, thanks for telling me, but could you tell me why? And if they say, well, we've done the research, and at 66 miles an hour, you're going to die a terrible, fiery death, I say, wow, thanks so much. I'm driving 50. But if you tell me the speed limit 65 miles an hour, and I ask you why, and your answer is, because I'm going 85, because you haven't made your case. The hotels have yet to make their case to justify resort fees. I'm sorry. That's not an embarrassment. That's an indictment. Am I being subtle here? I don't think so. Okay. We're almost out of time here. Uh, and in fact, we are out of time. But guess what? Tune in tomorrow. I've got a very early flight in the morning. I'm wheels up at O Dark 100. But you'll see me tomorrow at noon Eastern time, right back here on Facebook Live from Vienna with a special surprise guest. Trust me, it will be worth the wait. Plus, I'm going to show you the crazy ticket story visually of what happened this week. 
to one of our regular contributors and to my cameraman trying to get from LA to San Francisco. You won't believe the numbers I'm about to share with you tomorrow. How's that for a tease? Again, my thanks to everybody here at the Hard Rock in Dublin, to all the folks at Tourism Ireland for letting us come over here and do this show, but most importantly, to the people of Ireland for letting us come and play with them as well. Can't wait to come back. We're going to be doing one of our PBS specials here next year. But in the meantime, everybody travel safely, be, go be well, and just wait about 24 hours. And guess what? You get to see me again. Of course, I'll be in Austria where the favorite saying is, Mit Schlag. You know what that means? Everything is served with cream. So I may weigh a little more tomorrow. I hope not. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.